how realistic are weapons in D and D, or re or even what do they look like? Right? We get some illustrations. Here's a sickle down here. This is uh, this would be uh, like a, a a hand axe. Um, we get uh, and, and there's some illustrations up here too. Now, are all these styles of weapons commonly available? No, and you can look them up on YouTube and you can find them in ubiquitous places as well. Um, though here, live in front of you all. Um, there are some that I can uh, that I can display and we can see you know in real time and we can discuss and go over with that about if I have if I have a two-handed sword what does that mean if I have a great sword what does that mean and uh, and we can go from there so if you have a PHB and you want to crack it open we are in chapter 5 equipment I don't really have armor I mean I, I have you know I have this but uh, and oh I haven't worn it on stream. But I do have a leather breastplate. Uh, it's really like a, a leather gauntlet with that has a, a shoulder, a, a, one pauldron. And it's steampunk style, and it lights up uh, with LEDs. And it also has um, UV lights on the bottom so I can detect magic with it by, wa by waving my hand over it. Maybe I could show off that at, uh, at another point on stream if you want to see my, uh, my leather gauntlet. Skelligrim is a good channel as a primer for weapons. Oh, all right. I'll take that as a recommendation, too, Derek. In fact, I'll make a note of it real quick. There we go. Oh, yeah. Just looking at the, at the homepage there. Cool. Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> what not to use against the undead. That could be important. <laughs> Well, Derek, hopefully you'll find it to be as such. Um, I can... Oh, Volvo no Scologram, apparently. Uh, so, yeah, I, I can wear that on stream sometime. Um, I actually have a full, like, steampunk outfit, but I can certainly show off the... Because uh, it's a leather shoulder pad that kind of goes out some. And then it's... Uh, so it's leather, leather, leather with a gauntlet with uh, kind of, like, leathery claws on it, too. Okay. So, a couple things as I... Uh, Dark Wolf, if uh, if you're out there, give me an awoo. Uh, he's kind of big in the HEMA and Blade Collector communities. H-E-M-A. I'm not familiar with that acronym. Can you enlighten me, Derek? On YouTube, anyway. Historical European martial arts. Oh, okay. Hema. It kind of sounds like a blood sport, right? Eh, puns. Okay, Dark Wolf. So, Dark Wolf mentioned earlier uh, Sting. Okay. Now, to a hobbit, you know, because we're talking in third edition, a, uh, a long sword was a great sword for a halfling. You know, a long sword to a human was a great sword to a halfling. A uh, short sword to a human was a long sword to a halfling or a gnome, right? A small race. And so, uh, we can tell that there are no orcs around. But this could be considered a short sword in D&D. I.e. how a sword is actually used. <laughs> Got it, Derek. So, you know, it has the nice elven writing on it. Um, hey, Romonger. Uh, it unfortunately does not glow blue, or rather it's not glowing blue because uh, there are no orcs or goblins around. Though, this is... The blade is as long as... Uh, so if the hilt at my fingertips here, the blade goes just to my elbow, okay? If it, if it means anything, I'm about six foot one, all right? So this would be a short sword, and you know what? Uh, in the hands of humans, Dark Wolf, they might not consider this to be an effective blade, right? Because they look, oh, it's just a little, you know, it's like uh, it's like Arya Stark's sword, right? It's small. Who cares about it? Um, you know what? Whatever. Uh, though to a hobbit that's smaller, this is a great weapon. Th this is a weapon that would be, you know, the size of his torso. 
White fire. Oh, another person knows a Hema. <laughs> oh, hey, and Rose in on this too. Nice. Ironically, a piece I have while functional as a practice weapon is more uh, is more of a moment me and my whole man had crafting a practice sword, but it's good impact. Is more of a moment me? Oh, like mom oh, memento? What, was that a mistype? Is more of a memento and my... Uh, and your old man. Okay, yeah, autocorrect is fun, right? So you have a short sword that's like this. This is definitely uh, for slashy pokey. And uh, this is this is in the realm of fantasy, right? It glows. It has the nice, uh, the nice like leaf inlay. It has the elven script up here, and um, it's uh, it, it is that. Now we can look at. Let's look at what in history has been a rather effective short sword that will actually match the helmet that I'm wearing. So here we have a Gladius, all right? Nothing too fancy. This is a sword meant for war. It's meant for putting in work and getting things done. Okay? If you really wanted to, you you can... I have large hands. You could fit two hands. If you wanted to... Yeah. Um, you know, there is some decoration here, but you know what? If you really wanted to uh, pop someone, you could. And you could bean them especially well with the uh, the little bead at the end here to help direct the force and to, you know, concentrate the blow there. And you know what, uh, Romonger? I don't really have a good shield. But, uh... Now, this blade, compared to Sting, right? If my finger's on the hilt here, it's going past my elbow. So this is... this The blade is as long as my... The blade is as long as my arm. Whitefire, basically, while in most eastern nations are part of the world where they develop hand-to-hand -hand fighting because all weapons were essentially outlawed to the lesser people, while in the more western places most people had at least access to weapons, thus historical European martial arts. Yeah, that is a good summary. Oh, <laughs> Romonger, don't even get Whitefire started on rapier. Shh, stop it. <laughs> But, uh, hey, Delcorin, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming aboard. Uh, we are discussing uh, weapons and how they really look in their historical uses and their dimensions as compared to what we would see in, uh, in a D&D uh, world. So, for instance, here. Here's our stats and here's the generic weapons that we have for 5th edition. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be specific, Romonger. You gotta be specific. So, here is our Gladius. <laughs> Romonger says real rapiers. All right. Next up. Did I miss the discussion on how functional and awesome the Krull Glaive is? Uh, no, you haven't missed it. <laughs> that hasn't been brought up. Not toothpicks. Oh, your white fences. Huh. Ah. So, hey, what do we have here? Ooh, looky, looky. Look at the uh, look at the decoration, right? Ready? Nice, nice metal sheath. Got a little bit at the end there. Slight curve to the blade. And if you see, if you can see closely, oh, the, the filigreeing. There we go. This is probably going to be better here. I don't want to skewer my monitor. I don't know if it might not be focusing in on it too well.
Calvary Saber, yes. Is it Polish? Mm, that I'm not sure. If I if I'm recalling correctly, this was my grandfather's and he was in the US Navy. Now, does that mean that this is a US Navy officer's uh, uh, saber? That I can't tell you for certain. Now, uh, sabers don't uh, do not exist in D and D. Would that be statted as a rapier? Well, you do have a longer, thinner blade, though it's not a it's not a fencing foil. This won't you know kind of crumple up if you poke someone with it. Um, would they consider this to be a scimitar? Well, I don't know. How would you how would you stat this weapon? Would you count it as a short sword? Short sword, you could use dex instead of uh, now you can with a rapier too because it's a finesse weapon. Sabers are slashing weapons, says Ro. Scimitar would be more accurate. So in that case, uh, yeah, rapiers are more for poking, says Ro. So if we were to stat a saber as a scimitar, this is slashing. It is a D6 slashing weapon. Weighs about three pounds. Well, I mean, this has the sheath on it. Um, finesse, and it is a light weapon, meaning you can make an offhand attack with it. Now, if we look... If the hilt starts at my elbow, the blade extends past, and once more like what we see with the Gladius, the sword is going to effectively be arm length. If we start the tip here at my middle finger, and I'm pointing my middle finger at you, and it goes to my shoulder. It is light, and especially with the finger grips here in the handle, you can. It, it is easier to hang on to. You can wibble wobble it around very easily. Oh, actually, um, it is not Polish made. I'm sorry. Uh, so, if any of you are historians, I, I'm sorry. I thought there would have been a maker's mark on here somewhere. This says Jacob reads and Sons, Philadelphia. Jacob Reed's Sons, Philadelphia. It's balanced about three to five inches. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'd say so, Derek. This seems to be about the center right here. So yeah, the maker's mark, Jacob Reed's Sons, Philadelphia. Indicative of chopping. See, this is why we have these conversations. Chop, chop, chop. Think of the way an axe is made? Well... We can go over something along those lines. Now, this is not a uh, this is not a, uh, a get ye flask style axe. Okay. There's our sheath for it. So here would be a hand axe. Rather lightweight, right? Fits in one hand. I mean, if you want, you can swing with two. But you can see that my two hands here take up half of the half of the haft here, right? This uh, this is for your your to help uh, brace your hand. So 
So if we're looking at our D&D chart, this would be more like the 1D6 slashing uh, hand axe. Two hands comfortable. You can definitely wield it in one hand. And this would fit the light or even the throne. Uh, or even the, the throne. And if any of you are wondering... go. Sheathed and safe. You know, even even like this, uh, this still would, uh, it's a, yeah, Delcorn, it's a halfling battle axe. Now, this one is, yeah, Delcorn, this is a practice axe, right? Blunt, made of plastic. The, this is going to look more like the illustrations, but you can use this to, uh, well, you should still wear padding or uh, some sort of protection. You can use this to beat up your friends because it is, it's not steel. Uh, I mean, the, the brand name is Cold Steel, but uh, this is a, uh, um, it's a practice ax. You can have fun with it. You can bonk each other. It's not Nerf. This is not Nerf. So be careful if you get something like this or a training sword also, but this could be a training ax. You get the you get the shape, the feel. You don't you you're probably not going to get all of the weight, especially because the uh, the metal would be up here. <laughs> yep, nineteen oh two navy. Okay, so yes, that was uh, yep. Jacob Reeves or uh, Reed and Sons. Thank you, Bubonic. So yeah, that um, that uh, was probably then forged, and that that very well may have been my grandfather's navy saber. Or at least pass down to him. Why fire, dude? The pruses I've got from training weapons. Yep. You know, because even this, this is this. It's nice and rounded, but you know what? You you swing and the focus force goes here. This is a part of an axe that is meant to go through helmets and other pieces of armor, right? Because you can apply the force and you pop that can. This is a can opener. You want to see the pommel? Is this what you're talking about, Bubonic? <laughs> Bubonic coming with the Google Foo? Well done, yep. Unless you're talking about the... Uh, right here. You need to teach your players in combat to finish him rightly. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's a quote from something. Or put a picture of the sword up on Discord. I can do that too, Bubonic. We had someone bring in uh, hand... Uh, we had someone bring in hand and a half training swords. We were excited for the new swords. We were short both cold steel. Oh, okay. So yep, if you don't, if you can't buy or you don't want to use uh, even, I mean, not super live steel, like replica pieces or whatnot, you can get training weapons like this that can that can give a bruise in and take a beating themselves, and you get a feel for how to fight with that particular weapon. So a reference to a medieval training manual, you unscrew your pommel and throw it at a guy. <laughs> That's the dumbest move, says Bobicus. It means literally unscrewing or removing the pommel of the sword and throwing it in their face. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Now, speaking of training weapons, you can also get a Boken if you want to uh, go maybe more of a Kendo route, although that's more of a bamboo sword. But you can get a wooden practice sword that is Western or European in make. All right, so here's our Subo. And here's our handle with our, uh, with our knots coming down for the grip. White Fire only use them for movement, work, and slow speed to training. Uh, we were excited that we could have another skim uh, going, but blah. Another skim? Or did, you, did you mean skirmish? Or what was what was the intention? So something like this. If you bonk someone, this is hard wood. You will leave a bruise. All right. Also, if you bonk this against other wooden swords, they're going to dent each other. 
So just bear that in mind also if you wanted to try practicing or fencing with a Boken. Though in replica, right, blade starts at my fingertips and it extends the length of my arm and I'm a, I'm a little over six feet tall, if that's a, a reference for any of you here. So it is possible to go out and rather inexpensively, you can purchase practice weapons. You know, if you want to display them, if you want to have them as non-lethal self-defense, right? It'll be a little harder to kill someone without a pointy end or without a slashy bit. Or, uh, I mean, this is definitely a bonky do. Now, if, if these terms are way too technical for you, right? Pointy bits, slashy ends, and bonky do's. Um, you got to let me know and I'll, I'll slow it down. Yep, Boken. That is correct. Boken one. Side note, don't underestimate the wood and aluminum. It'll conf uh, it, it, it will disable, and uh, if you want to... If you want to kill someone uh, with this, uh, I mean, I'd make sure you can explain it to the jury, but, uh, you know, it's possible to, to beat someone with this. A friend of mine who got me into this starts uh, everywhere he goes. He never seemed to find them where he goes. It's pretty awesome. Oh, and uh, hell, I don't have any boffer weapons here at the house, but if you go to, uh, there are places that will teach you to make boffer weapons out of PVC pipe and pool noodles for, um, for padding. You can make some really cool boffer weapons, axes, daggers, uh, uh, quarterstaffs, that kind of a thing. And so it's kind of like nerf battling, only you've made your own nerf weapons. Um, you just get some duct tape, some foam, some pool noodles, and a little PVC pipe, and you're good. Well, right, Bubonic, but this isn't just going to stab through someone. Staves are OP. I, I think that they are... Even if, well, even if they're not OP, I think staves are underrated. Because you're like, oh, that's just a piece of wood. What are you going to do? Hit me with it? Well, yeah, I'll just, I'll one shot and I'll crack you on the top of the head. And I'm going to either knock you out or kill you. <laughs> Dude, watch a 15 minute video and you'll have it down. Made dozens of boffer weapons. Yep. It's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time and crafting. Uh, so if any of you out there are feeling crafty, you know, you could, you could probably even sell them to some friends and go out and look, summer's around the corner. Make, make responsibly, but make some boffer weapons and have some fun. You know, why lose nerf darts when you could go out and beat each other with foam battle axes? <laughs> Anything that enhances your reach is OP. Well, okay, yeah, that is true as well. That's, uh, your next project's gonna be, uh, a plastid, uh, a plastidip. I'm not sure what plastidip is, but that is down the way, you say. Wish I still had my boffer longsword. Aw, oh, Derek. Spears are aggravating uh, when you're using a sword. Yeah, because <laughs> you'll, you'll get poked from far away. Now, the next one I have here, I do not have a sheath for. However, here we go. We'll begin. This one does not have the etching, though we do have the slight curve to the blade. And we don't have as decorative a pommel, though you can still see it's not quite a hand basket. It is open. And instead of the grips that were molded into the handle, right, we have like a, a, a twisted metal wire. I don't know if you can hear that. This is what's wrapped around the handle. So, really meant for one-handed fighting. Nice, solid metal here. And the, a curved blade. Knuckle guard. Yep, not a hand basket. A knuckle guard for knuckle heads. Though it does have, uh, while it doesn't have the, the acid etching or the filigree that the other one did, this does have a, uh, it does have a blood groove running along the, uh, the blunt end, right? The back end of the blade.
Yeah, but I think a basket's more of the full coverage. Or is it not a blood groove? I'm sorry if I have the terminology incorrect. Uh, but starting here on the blade, there is an extra groove aside from the indentation uh, on the pinch here. So starting here, there's an extra groove running up, and it uh, it stops right about here, too. And then, of course, we have the rest of the blade here. Hey, that's fine. I'm not claiming to know everything about swords. Um, I just have some of them uh, for various uh, for various reasons, and of course, as a and d player, I have an interest in it. So if you can correct me and you can put something out there, I'm... I would rather learn and also engage in conversation with you than just sit here and, you know, go blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an expert even when I'm not and go on from there. Yeah, blood grooves are really just air pockets so your, uh, your blade doesn't get stuck in someone. Yeah, it's like uh, sticking your, uh, your boot in some mud, huh? You're stirring around in the guts. Uh, Whitefire says, yes, I've uh, held at bay two people with a spear who had swords. One who was a good swordsman, the other had about 15 minutes of training. <laughs> so, yes, I do have another uh, another shaver. But I did not see a maker's mark on it. You know, I, I look at uh, I look at our bonky, uh, our bonky do here, and it's not there, and it's not at the base of the blade either. So, unless I'm missing something, or you all know that there is a popular or common place where maker's marks are found on uh, particularly sabers, uh, this is generic saber that was forged by someone at some point in time. King has the idea it also helps lessen the weight and allows the center of balance to be closer to the guard, making it a little more nimble. There you go. And, of course, we don't want our swords stuck inside of... Uh, our enemies. I mean, we want them stuck inside our enemies, but we don't want them stuck inside our enemies. Yeah, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing a maker's mark. Unless, is that one? I don't know, it seems a little cryptic, but right here on the blade, it almost looks like an 11. Also, it has a little bit more rigidity to it, much like an I beam. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can feel that. Like it, it is, it is very stiff, and it is very well done in that regard. It'd probably be on the tang. Oh, um, I'm, I'm looking at the tang, um, silver, and uh, I am not. And again, unless I'm getting my sword anatomy wrong, I'm looking at the tang, and I am not seeing it at the uh, base of the blade here. <laughs> And I don't see it on the pommel either. Not on the knuckle guard. So unless it's unless for some reason this type of a design, with a uh, maybe a wooden handle with this twisted wire around it, is uh, its own maker's mark. I don't see anything. I don't see dates along the blade, and I don't. I do not see marks along the blade either. And there's also no etching. So I have a mysterious. Uh, I have a mysterious pirate saber. We'll just call it that. Because <laughs> that sounds cooler. Tang is a seal. The blade goes through the handle. Oh, okay. Oh, on the inside? All right, well, yeah, I'm not going to take it apart, but thank you for the advice and the heads up on that. Yeah, people always think that Euro swords uh, are these brittle, crude, non-bending swords. Like, no. Well, I because that's... Uh, um, so, uh, white fire. I think that's because when you see a lot of kung fu movies, and they, you know, you see the Chinese swords, and they're always like so wobbly, and then they, of course, they put the little, uh, they put the little pom pom or like the little tassel on the end to try and distract you, especially on spears. Right? You have the you have the deadly pointed end of the metal, and then they put like a red flashy, like a little wavy do there, and they wobble it around in your face to try and distract you as they're trying to jab you. <laughs> Pointy thing on sticks, says Bobacus. The, the great god sword, the katana. Well, I... I mean, if you all want to see... The only thing that can beat it is another katana.
All right. You get good leverage. Get good grip. <laughs> you love making them cringe, don't you? Well, the iron in Japanese steel is, uh, or, or rather, there's a, there's a property of it that uh, that makes it uh, rather brittle, if not the folding process. Yep, bro, that is uh, that is true. Uh, because in many ways, the katana, if I recall correctly, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong, um, it was almost like just a long, thin razor blade. It wasn't necessarily meant for slashing. Well, it was more meant for slashing. It was like a, it was like a long razor blade that even flakes of the metal would shave off when you, uh, when you fought with your sword. So the maintenance of your sword was super important. Um... And, uh, it, but it was more like a long razor blade than it was, uh, like a solid, uh, long sword or some other Western sword. Derek says, if you want to see something fascinating, check out Viking style sword and board. Uh, it has babies inside the blade. Yeah, many, many of them were ceremonial. It is very meh. Now, katanas can be carried alone, although bonus points to you if you know what the uh, the term for the three swords that were often carried together, and especially what the uh, what the display was for them. There you go, Bubonic. There you go. I have a dice show behind me, but I'm not going to get it right now. Yeah, now I'm edumacated. <laughs> now, for all of you who play monks out there, right, this could very well be a quarterstaff. We have an oriental dragon carved into into the uh, into the wood. It's, you know, it's good, it's heavy, but there is a reason for that, because inside, inside the staff is hidden two blades. So... Half, right? Half of it is handle, and the blades probably go down at least a couple inches down here. Though be, uh, they nestle together, you can see. You can see here. Hang on. You see where the other blade nestles in on the opposite piece. If you're a monk and you want to fight with a quarter staff, fight with a quarter staff. If you're a monk that suddenly wants to fight with short swords, get a weapon like this. Right? You just got to learn how to line them up a little bit better than what I'm doing. Right? And then... Dun -da -da, dun -da -da -da, and... Dun -da -da -da, and now you have your quarter staff again. And inside, nice and solid, you have two short swords if you need them. <laughs> Lose points for no guard on them. I guess, but I don't know how you would work a guard, a guard into here and still keep them, uh, and still keep them looking like uh, an actual staff. And plus, remember too. So here is the middle of the, you know. So here's this. Look, we're gonna come down. Here's the middle, and then the rest of the blade is, you know, it goes almost to the to the tip here. And so you may not have a guard, but look how much hand room you get to hold. 
if you needed it. Pretty sure it's a Daisho Katana and Tonto. It, well, it, it, it is Tonto, not uh, not Tenno. You can only imagine trying to get the edge alignment on that while cutting is tricky. Mm. Doesn't look like you have a good sense of edge alignment because of the handle. I'm not sure if the side with the gap would uh, keep it from giving away. Yeah, so in total, um, in total silver, it is, this is going to start at my fingertips here. Actually, you know what? I have a gnomish uh, way of shadow monk name generator right here. If any of you remember what we were doing last night. Three feet, three inches. Three feet, three inches. And I'll tell you, that'll make a solid club, too. <laughs> yeah, I knew I wasn't saying it right. A uh, Wakazashi Romonger, yes. The, the Daisho is what holds the three blades. The, uh, the Katana... The Wakazashi and the Tonto. Uh oh, Bobacus is uh, Bobacus is getting heated. It looks like. Uh, that's it. I'm sick of all this quote unquote master work bastard sword uh, BS that's going on in the D20 system right now. Katanas deserve much better than that. Much much better than that. I know I I know what I'm talking about. I myself commissioned a genuine katana in Japan. For 2,400,000 yen, that's about $20,000, and have been practicing with it for almost two years. I can even cut slabs of solid steel with my glorious Nippon steel. Japanese smiths spend years working on a single katana and fold it up to a million times to produce the finest blades known to mankind. Katanas are thrice as sharp as European swords, and slice as hard for that matter too. Anything a longsword can cut through, a katana can cut through better. I'm pretty sure a katana could easily bisect a knight, wearing full plate with a simple vertical slash. Ever wonder why medieval Europe never bothered conquering Japan? That's right, they were too scared to fight the disciplined samurai and their katanas of destruction. Even in World War II, American soldiers targeted the men with the katanas first because their killing power was feared and respected. So what am I saying? Katanas are simply the best sword the world has ever seen, and thus require better stats in the D20 system. Here is the stat block I propose for katanas. One-handed exotic weapon, 1d12 damage, 19 to 20 times 4 crit, plus 2 to hit and damage counts as masterwork. Two-handed exotic weapon, 2d10 damage, 17 to 20 times 4 crit, plus 5 to hit, and damage counts as masterwork. <laughs> there was your dramatic reading. Yeah, <laughs> Derek. Oh, Bob, you are such the epic troll tonight. <laughs> The traditional staff weapon of Japan, yeah, it is a bow, and it's usually six feet long. Yes, so th this isn't a full quarter staff. It well, it's a uh, we'll, we'll call it an eighth staff, right? It's half of a quarter. <laughs> so, so Bobicus, you're being called out. But you know what? I'll tell you this, uh, Derek. Uh, Bobicus is probably the nicest troll we've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're posting pasta. Romonger, I study metal for a living. I just got trolled and now I'm in an argument in my office, thanks. <laughs> is, what is the argument about, Ro? Great troll, but I do think they get miffed a lot in D20 systems. Uh, Del Corin's adding in, good grief, that's almost as much as I make a year, and I work full-time in a factory. <laughs> Master Stormwind, hello, welcome to the conversation. As you can see by the disclaimer, we are going over weapons and we're comparing them to uh, role-playing systems, particularly D&D. Are they accurate in terms of output, the way that they're used? Obviously, the, the weapons that we see up here are a distillation of, you know, sometimes several different blades can exist within one stat block. And in fact, if we come over here, Dun, da, da, da. 
here's our Wuzia, um, our, our, our Wuzia, Wuzia weapon names. So this is taking the Western concept that we have in our Chapter 5 of our PHB, and this is what it could be known in, mm, pardon me, in uh, China or Japan. But yes, Master Stormwind, hi and welcome. Yeah, oh yeah, you're you're in Japan right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Romonger, please, if you haven't already, and there are uh, cherry trees blooming because it is April, please take some pictures. I would love to see them on our Discord. That would be great. You just realize if you dissect the pic I just posted, you can pretty much tell most of my common interests. My wallow good times. <laughs> so that's over in the Discord, too. I won't know how to argue about what damage should be because HP makes no sense whatsoever. While well, you're having an argument about katanas in Japan, that's actually pretty sweet. <laughs> Delcorn says, I want a glaive, but I'd be worried the DM would make me roll for damage to myself along with my target. Why, would, why is that? Bubonic, the average size of a bow is six shaku, around six feet. But they can be as long as nine feet. Q shaku bow. Because Q, Q or Q is nine in, in Haponese. There's no trees where I am in Fukushima. Oh, okay. Well, if you can take a picture of something, I'd like to see it. All right. Now, let's discuss the mighty power of the dagger. Our fun little dexterous D4 damage dealer. Ooh, that was a lot of Ds. Take a pick of Fugu to make him happy. <laughs> you mean like Fuji? Or... Oh, oh, you did mean Fugu. Poison tasty fish. Got it. HP and damage are almost purely game mechanics. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I do agree, Silver. So when you're hit and you lose hit points, is that really like you're bleeding out from a wound? Not necessarily. That could just represent exhaustion, mental or physical. Hey, Sketch Ben. So... This is one that uh, I received from a friend who thought uh, that I'd, I'd like the decorative elements. And you know what? When you get something a little smaller like this... In fact, Dark Wolf, I don't know if you're out there. You would probably like this dagger as well. Will that focus? Will you focus? <laughs> That's the game. Will it focus? But you can also get a nice decorative little... Um, in this case, this is like a faux bone handle. And so you get some nice filigree coming up the side here. And you can have a lot of decorative elements to it. Now, is this a throwing dagger? No, this is this you could you could throw it. This is not a throwing dagger. While dagger is just a generic entry in Dungeons and Dragons, um, it is not uh, there are throwing daggers and then there are just the pointy stabby do daggers. This is a pointy stabby do dagger with a lot of um, cosmetic elements to it. Um, I do... There is a surprisingly big knife that I have, Derek, but I don't know. it Because it was... It, it might have very well been literally grandfathered. I don't know if I can show it, but I do have a particular knife that is uh, belonging to a particular frontiersman um, that my grandfather used to own. And, I mean, I don't do anything with it. I, I have it as a, collector, a collector's item, but... Um, so, yeah, with a dagger, in-game... Huh, right, what wasn't the... Actually, wasn't this a meme? You all were surprised at me for not knowing Skyrim. Wasn't this a meme that you can't even buy daggers or sell them, or that you, you increase, you become a master blacksmith by making, like, a thousand daggers or something like that? Try placing my other hand behind it to block the background. All right, I'll give that a try, Silver. Uh, this is what uh, this is what uh, Whitefire has shared, that those are daggers as well.
you're in a discussion about the advantages of folding steel. Are are you are you comparing like the folding of steel to like Damas the Damascus style or like the the Japanese style to uh, traditional Damascus or or just uh, kind of uh, melting and mixing the alloys together something like that? There's no sense of scale, so I'm assuming those knives are the size of a horse. <laughs> you become a master blacksmith by making a thousand daggers. Yes. Okay. Got it, Bob. Yes. Derek's sacrificial dagger is up. Not high quality, but it, it is a gift that I cherish. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Oh, you got a wolf plate. That's neat, too. But I like that. Oh, and look. Oh, Ken and Rio. That's neat. Oh, and uh, oh, and that's Akuma in the background. There's your, there's your die show. That's cool. And Derek, you said that you you pounded out this sword. You know, Delcorin, um, Drow use a weapon like this. It is a special like Drow only weapon. That's a bladed boomerang. Oh, I forget the name of it. What? Oh, what is it called? Do any of you out there remember what the the special Drow like the Drow only bladed boomerang is called? Oh, you and your old man made it. That's cool. Oh, all right. There's uh, there's Derek's dagger. Or sacrificial one, even. Um, now, because you are D&D &D nerds, I know they existed as their own thing in 3rd edition. We have, we have another type of a dagger called a Chris. That's the one that has, like, the wavy... Right? It, it, maybe it's more ceremonial, but that's the one with the wavy blade, the thin wavy blade. Then you also have something that's like a kukri. Would you count a kukri, K-U-K-R-I, as a dagger? Or would you count it maybe as a short sword? Or like a machete as a short sword as well, instead of a knife? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, Ben. You know, just this piece of plastic traps heat. You can only imagine when you're in, um, you know, North Africa and you're wearing one of those. Whitefish is providing uh, something for scale. Are you providing a banana for scale? Okay. For scale. In the name of scale... Also, thank you for the compliment sketch, Ben. I appreciate that. I got myself prettied up today so I can make the video to promote the channel uh, to Twitch and see if we can make it on the front page as part of their competition. Uh, yeah, Silver, it's it's that three-pronged uh, bladed boomerang they have. Do you remember the name of it? You missed the spike chain. Not sure why 5e didn't have it. Uh, you can always make rules for it, though they do have... Um, they address that in the uh, in the monk section of fifth edition. I, I'm pretty sure, or they called it the sickle and chain. Let's go over to monks real quick. For example, you might use a club that's two lengths of wood connected by a short chain called nunchaku, or a sickle with a shorter, straighter blade called a kama. Um, oh, I thought they had a. Um, I actually thought they had an equivalent for. Either the weight in the chain, or uh, or like a sickle on chain, or a spike chain. Yeah, you get because you get spike devils too. You could probably look at their at the stat block of a spike demon or a spike devil. Uh, folding steel versus just having a forge that can get hot enough to remove the impurities. Uh, okay, you think kukri mechanically works more like a hand axe? Oh, uh, that could be the case too, master, because it does have that bend in it, and it is meant for chopping. Um, it's also good if you're a rogue and you can kind of sneak up and, you know, do some wet work. Look and sw Hey, thank you, Ben. I really appreciate that. You get me all buttered up here. Short sword. I treat machetes as short sword. Short swords? Why not? Yeah, okay. It's commonly considered a sword. 
<laughs> Whistles. Hey, now, I'm no tabaxi, Sketch Ben. I'm no tabaxi. I could be, though. Let's see if I am. I am no tabaxi, though I am a beautiful female half-orc wizard. Better watch yourself. I will break you. <laughs> you better believe I'll take uh, Bigby's crushing fist. Um, Bobacus. Oh, you wanted more detail? Okay, from Sketch Ben. Front page. Uh, okay. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Sketch Ben is working on a game project. Uh, in effect, Bobacus, uh, if, if we wanted to set up a collusion, I know it was something we had talked about earlier about improving the bots, Bobacus. Sketch Ben had also offered to, uh, to hop in on that collusion and see what we might be able to whip up. Uh, so we might be able to make a kind of like a, a three-way conference call or something along those lines in order to get things uh, better resolved. A bladed throwing weapon is often called a glaive. Yeah, it, um, though there's a particular... The drow... Yeah, hazard dex rolls, Roamonger. The drow had a particular kind of, like, chakram or glaive or... Uh, it was its own three-pronged bladed boomerang, and I forget the name of it. Well, my friend, if I res please and become a female tabaxi, we can make tabaxi orcs. <laughs> so we'll have uh, we'll have green cats. Bobacus, my computer is dead right now, so I'm not going to do a contribute. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry you died, Bobacus. Chain weapons are dangerous for the wielder. Yeah, if they don't know how to use them, that is very true. All right. Lastly, and not leastly, we have, uh, coming on the heels of a dagger, we have this. There's still more. Oh my goodness, there's still more. That's right, the Zendrick. That sounds familiar. You want a knife? Here's a knife. Look at, uh, this is, this is about five feet of sword here. See how far I can even distance my, uh, my hands? Right? This is a claymore, you are correct. I will, Derek. Uh, I live in a century home. It has very high ceilings, and I'm also sitting down. And the closest cat to me is... Uh, she must have got offended that I yelled at her, so I don't need to worry about them. But you are correct. You should always be aware of your surroundings, and I assure you that I am. But look at uh, look at this butte right here. All right, we huh, we want to talk about uh, we want to talk about sword length. So here uh, to my elbow, right. Here's my, here's my starting position. There is another arm's length from the elbow, maybe even more. In fact, if I put my fingertip here and I hold it across, I'll hold it all the way out and it stretches across. This goes from my fingertip on this side here, the very end of my middle finger to just past the crook of my elbow on my right hand. And I can measure the blade to give you an exact feet and inches if you'd like. Yep. You do not... As much as I like Berserk, and I love Berserk, that's not <laughs> an effective sword. You do want something that will have a little wobble, that'll have a little flex. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's test it out then, Derek. Sketchman ponders what Berserk is. All right. 
This is about the balance point here. And if we measure it, it comes in at about two feet to the end of the pommel. I don't know if you can see that very well. Though if we're just measuring, you know, the blade coming out of, uh, of even where it emerges, not even from the hilt, but from the pommel, it is nine inches. If we, uh, if we're looking here. So nine or 10 inches, Derek. Also, you get a healthy respect for Cloud and Sephiroth if you have a weapon like this. Because when you go to sheath your sword... Oh, lordy. Uh, here, I'll give you some ASMR. Sketch bend that ASMR. Yes. <laughs> and you know what, Sketch Ben? I have metal sheaths. I have a. I have some wooden sheaths. I have leather sheaths. What do you want? <laughs> I have a plastic sheath. And also, I carry on me. Well, it's not here. I have. Uh, let's see. The company was around. I think it went out of business about a hundred years ago. I have a bone handle pocket knife that I, I got from my grandfather, and that, that little pocket knife is, uh, it's about a hundred years old. I looked up the maker's mark on it, and that was, uh, that was very impressive. Been a whole night of armory talk. Oh yeah, plunder loot, yep, that's what we've been up to. Bubonic, you're saying that, uh, what I showed off was, uh, what many consider to be the bastard sword is the hand and a half? Heck, if I were playing Munchkin, I could have put a third hand on it. Hey, Plunder just shared them with the blade. Me and my old man forged. Yes, that uh, that is up on. Uh, oh, and King's back too. King, you missed all the uh, all the armory talk that we had after you were gone, <laughs> as is logical. Berserk is some weeb anime or whatever. Nothing to do with proper Western D and D. You take you take that back, Bobakus. You're not allowed to say that about my favorite anime. And, and I bet you don't even read the monger either. If you don't know anything about my Chinese cartoons, you better just lay off, man. Ask him to show you his grandfather's saber. You'll appreciate the military history. Um, yeah, uh, Bavikus, I, I am with King on this one. Overlord is up in another episode. This one foot. Uh, Tamature sword buyers just avoid cold steel like the plague. Uh, a true great sword is almost always as tall as the user. It that one, uh, that one almost is. I'm six foot one, and that one goes up. Actually, here. Four foot ten inches. Wait. Yeah, I think that was correct. Yeah, four foot ten. Yep, Derek. Manger. My manger in my anime. Berserk is old, says Bubonic. It has been around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, Bobby. I've had you in my sights since session one. <laughs> no, I have not, uh, Derek. I've 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 collected them over the years. Uh, they, you know, things catch my interest or things become available in some form or another, and they they just sort of come into the collection. Sketchman hides to save his exp. <laughs> oh, you're watching Castlevania. Uh, are you talking about the? Uh, are you talking about the Annie Mae of Castlevania plunder loot? King says pew pew pew. Praise be to the saga of Tanya the Evil. Oh, boy. yep. 
I'd love to anime bash, but I don't want to start a riot here. <laughs> well, too bad, Romonger. We're going to have a riot. <laughs> um, King, did you... I know it was offered, but did you want to see the military saber? Yeah, claimer were meant to be used by guys that were often uh, times at least five feet. Uh, very tall for Europeans. Yeah, that was tall for them at the time. When I was in Peru... Uh, we went into the catacombs of a cathedral, and you would see coffins that were meant for people who would top out at maybe four feet tall. You're like, wow, halflings were us. <laughs> Praise be to vitamins and proper diet. <laughs> All right, King wants to take a wants to take a look. See, well, here, King, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my my helmet on again here. Yeah, we we are giants. So here's the metal scabbard to chemicals and hormones. <laughs> oh no, King. I'm sorry to hear that. Sketch Ben, you ready for some uh, some more ASMR? So we have a slightly curved blade. And we will use Silver's technique to get the focus in. And that's the maker's mark. Yeah, Bubonic, this is one I showed earlier. Uh, King wanted to see the, the military saber. And once more, Sketch Ben. Oh, no. Oh, my. Well, anyway, so King, uh, are, are you a uh, are you a history geek? Does this uh, does this get you uh, does this uh, scratch an itch you didn't know you had? She's a good saver. And now for Sketch Ben, I will present Gladius on Leather. <laughs> to match the helmet. And I definitely cannot give you a Roman salute because these days, ooh, that doesn't fly. Even if it's historical, you can't do that. Yep, that is true, King. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to, uh, I forgot to uh, do it close to the microphone. Here, are, here is the sheathing of the gladius. We can. We can clip this, the sheathing of the gladius. Yep, that is the Navy version. My grandfather was an officer in the Navy. <laughs> when did that start? Uh, it kind of started um, semi-accidentally, Derek. Or I kind of did it as a joke, right? Because, um, look, other people have their streams. They're doing their own thing, and I'm not wishing them poorly. Uh, but ASMR is a really big thing I in over in IRL and, I don't know, maybe even creative. 
And uh, and so every once in a while, um, I would just uh, I'd get really close, and we'd go over some D and D ASMR, and I'd produce some kind of sound effect while I whisper into the microphone, because that's how you do it. <laughs> So there you go. That is, uh, that's most of the collection that I have. There's only a couple, there's a couple things that I didn't show off yet. And that includes, uh, oh, so it'd be armor, but as I hinted earlier, I have a leather shoulder pad going down into a full arm gauntlet that has, uh, uh articulated fingers as well. But, uh, it, it covers my, my full left arm. Just a nice, uh, thick, uh, leather gauntlet. Uh, Caden says, I used to love listening to Gladius Knight and the Pips. <laughs> Known for songs like Every Beat of My Spartan. <laughs> Every Beat of My Spartan. <laughs> and if I were your swordsman. <laughs> viewer retention, making them fall asleep before they click off one viewer at a time. Oh, we're inside the, the, the machinations of the ASMR community, Derek. Those sound like good songs, winning. Ah, uh, gladiator style arm guard. Uh, somewhat like that, yes. Uh, except this one has LEDs and uh, including, including uh, ultraviolet ones. So as I pass my hand over stuff, it can detect magic. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to show off there was one more there was one more sword that I had that I wanted to uh, that I did want to show off to you all. I am Legion. And you ready for some ASMR? I am Locutus of Borg. <laughs> so it's not uh, we're we're working on the manifestation aspect of it, but at least I have the hilt. It does make for a nice uh, if you want a nice tactical flashlight, right? You want a red one. One of the best GMs of my mentor brought a sweater that could cast spells, made his GMing that much more engaging when we fought spellcasters. <laughs> okay. What, uh, how could the sweater cast, uh, spells? Unless you're talking about the item that you rip the patches off in the game, is that what you're talking about? I have, uh, Sykes Fairbane, uh, Sass Dagger. It's illegal to do anything but to show it in your house in New York. Ah. Actually, I will, uh, I'm gonna look something up. I'm going to check something here. Ah, okay. Here we go. By the way, so I, I have the disclaimer of check your local law. Um, we can choose our state here. And so I'll click on Ohio. So in Ohio, oh, by the way, more ASMR. Um, oh, uh, did we get the haunted house riddled with guy? Is that a question to me, Plunder? Because that in our mage game? It is legal to own a switchblade or gravity knife. It is legal to own a balisong or butterfly knife as well. 
Oh, I gotta practice on my, uh, you know, on my, my 50s ne'er-do-well, uh, butterfly knife. It is legal to own a ballistic knife, a dirk, dagger, or other stabbing knife. It is legal to own a bowie knife, and it is legal to own a stiletto. Uh, limits on carry. Oh, uh, yes, I, I sealed the deal, and uh, the real estate agent is kind of a power broker out of Baltimore, because we're in Laurel, Maryland, and we're between, uh, like, halfway between Baltimore and D.C., and he's a big, like, real estate power broker, uh, who I believe has Death Arcana, because he had two, like, assistants with him uh, that were not living, and, um, yeah... So there's LEDs in the sleeve and an accelerometer in the sleeves and the speaker. Winning stuff, indeed. So you could make gestures to cast spells. Ooh, that's cool, yeah. That is cool, Whitefire. So, yep, uh, let's go over, uh, let's check out... Uh... So, over in New York, where, uh, where bu uh, Bubonic... Bubonic one is living. It is legal to own a hunting knife, a dirk, or dagger, and it is legal legal to own a stiletto. And all of these things are illegal to own in the state of New York. A metal knuckle knife, a pylum ballistic. You know what? For a second, I thought that said an arcane sword, and I'm like, an arcane sword? What the heck? <laughs> You cannot own a cane sword. Uh, you cannot own throwing stars. Uh, you can. It is illegal to own any knife if you're not a U.S. citizen. It is illegal to own any knife adapted uh, for use primarily as a weapon. It may be illegal to own a gravity knife without a valid hunting and or fishing license. It may be illegal to own a switchblade knife without a valid hunting or, fi or uh, fishing license. So there you go. Um... <laughs> It was kind of haunted before we uh, before we bought it. In fact, it's it's sitting on a uh, it's sitting on a on a nice tasty uh, node for us to get mana from, uh, specifically death. But uh, hey, spicy Larry, uh, spicy as you've seen, um, you have fallen, and Delcorin is sitting atop the throne and barely maintaining his grasp. Uh, also, spicy, we've been going over uh, armaments and we've been discussing them in the context of D and D. Are they realistic? What do they really look like compared to sketches or, you know, especially because earlier we had the discussion uh, with a couple of our artists in here about, you know, big kind of fantasy blades with, you know, circles and pointy bits and stabby doos and, and whatnot. You know, what well, what does that look like? Oh, no. Delcorin takes a hit. Spicy is uh, <laughs> Spicy's killing you by inches here, Delcorin. Yep, Del sniped it from you. What was that about my throne? <laughs> oh no, Delcor and Spicy just came up and kind of went. Pfft. What was that about my throne? <laughs> uh. Oh, and Spicy just TPK'd your party when they wake woke up. Good times. Oh no, what uh, what happened, Spicy? By the way, while I have this up, are any of you curious uh, curious about knife laws in whatever state you're in? If so, let me know and I'll click over on it and we'll we'll check it out together. Oh no, Death to Larry! Death to Larry's here. Everyone, watch out! Spicy takes another uh, slap at Del Corin. The sword of Damocles is getting a bit scary, anyway, right? How appropriate is that? So we have uh, swinging over top, Del Corin. Oh no, and we just have. Oh wow. The the king is dead. Long live the king. Ah, feels nice. <laughs> Delcorin. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. Um plunder in Alabama, the only thing that is illegal is concealed bowie knives. Well, let's check her out. What is legal? Balasong slash butterfly knives, switchblades, gravity knives, automatic and assisted opening knives are legal. Stilettos, dirks, and toothpick knives are legal. All folding knives. Uh, bowies are legal if carried open, like on your hip. 
So if it's open carry, Bowies are legal to carry concealed if you're on your own property. Double-sided knives are legal no matter the size. If the knife fits in your pocket, it is legal. And um, out the front knives are legal. And there are some illegal... There are some illegal things in Alabama. In good old Alabama. Uh, Bowies and things that are like Bowies are illegal if concealed. Bowies are illegal to have in your vehicle. A machete might be classified as a Bowie, and it would be illegal if you carry it concealed. An 11-inch butcher knife has to be found to be like a Bowie in court, so don't plan on using it in a crime. And selling Bowies to people under 18 is illegal. You TPK'd them all and dropped the... Oh, gotcha. It was all a dream. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, so was that a portent on what not to do in the future, Spicy? Or was that to keep them on their toes? Did you want to rattle the cage a little bit? Or uh, actually, huh, you know what we can do? I can saber rattle. Saber rattle, saber rattle, saber rattle. Did I provoke a war? Watch out for the sword. The horsehair is starting to fray. Uh, oh, yeah. South Carolina. And All right. I'll look at Washington next. Watch out for the sword. Okay. Check South Carolina. I love that state. So that's what we're doing, Bubonic. Um, it is legal. It is legal to own a switchblade, balisong, Bowie knife, dirk dagger, stabbing knife, a stiletto. It is legal to own a disguised knife, such as in a lipstick or belt buckle. Hey, that's something interesting. Um, it is. Um, it is legal to own any type of knife in South Carolina, though there it looks like there are some restrictions on carry, specifically concealed carry. And by the way, if you want to read the specifics and not just take the uh, the gist, look at this. Hey, you want some you want some role play inspiration? Let, you know, if we're linking this to D and D, it is legal to own a disguised knife, such as in a lipstick or a belt buckle. Yeah, I, I said legal. I said legal. White fire. Unless uh, is the the delay? Am I missing something? Oh, I'm sorry. It is legal. I'm sorry. The restrictions on carry. I got it. I got it. I'm I'm a derp here. The uh, the heat of the Mediterranean sun here at uh, at 2 a.m. in Ohio is uh, boiling my brain. Forget me. Let's go up to Washington. I like playing as my friendly Mediterranean swamp druid lizard folk. May or may not contain slot parts. <laughs> I wouldn't eat that if I were you. <laughs> so here you go. This is Washington. It is legal to own a Dirk Dagger stabbing knife. It is legal to own a Bowie. It is uh, legal to own a stiletto. It is legal to own a disguised knife, such as a lipstick or belt buckle. And it is legal to own throwing stars. Um, it is illegal to own a switchblade or other sp uh, spring blade knife in the state of Washington. And restrictions on carry. It is illegal to conceal carry a dirk, dagger, uh, any dangerous weapon. Uh, it is illegal to open or conceal carry any weapon into a courtroom. <laughs> I mean, uh, if that's the case, we might want to check out California. Bowie knives are legal. Large knives are. No restriction in size. Carrying knives in the open is legal. Carrying knives concealed is legal for most knives. Um, misleading knives are illegal. 
Those include cane knives and shobizues, lipstick knives, belt knives, pen knives, air gauge knives, and pen knives. All undetectable knives are illegal. They include knives that won't uh, set off metal detectors. Dirks, daggers, and stilettos are illegal, and ballistic knives are illegal. What the law is trying to get at is that knives are usually used by criminals to commit crimes. These are knives that don't look like knives or don't have use as a tool. For example, you can't do much with a dagger besides stab things. So, all right, does this mean we're going to have a conversation about Cascadia, or is this what we're getting into? <laughs> all right, let's just, just put it out there. Are we going to talk about Cascadia or not? <laughs> Plastic credit card, uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, there's a, there's a, a knife dealer in, in a city somewhat close to me. Uh, he sells kind of throwing stars, but they're actually playing cards that are uh, printed on metal, and they have the sharp edges. So if you want to throw the cards, then you can. Like, are we going to talk about the state of Jefferson? <laughs> so anyway, um, we had a really awesome talk about armaments. You know, you as a player, can you envision these things? In fact, have you been inspired by the either the stuff that I've showed off or, hey, a lipstick knife, that's really interesting. <laughs> White fire, just about the dumbest thing to ever exist. Oh, we're not going to talk about Cal Exit <laughs> or the six state solution. And and again, if you do want to give things here, I'll scoot it over some. If you want to give things uh, a bit of an oriental flavor, if you go to your DMG and you look on page 41, for the Wuja weapon names. This is the Chinese or Japanese equivalent. And if you want Korean, I hope you have a Korean friend. Because we're just getting the two languages here. You live in Alabama now, former territory of Georgia Colony in the Mississippi Territory and Spanish Florida. I was born and grew up uh, a, a good long while in Florida. I do miss it at times, especially just being able to go to, uh, you know, you can go out in uh, February and it's not uh, like minus 10. I heard that Cali could actually be in the process of breaking into states. Yes, not likely to happen, but if it did, yeah, there, there was a plan. Oh, I mean, there's always plans, but to break it into six states, then of course there's always the, the Northern uh, Californians are like, look, all the big cities are in the South and we don't feel represented. Uh, because we're we're more rural, we're farmers, and we give you your food, and in return, you just outvote us on everything. I'm not trying to get political. I, I am not a political person. I'm philosophical, but I, I don't play into uh, partisan factions. Um, but because there's a la they feel that there's a lack of representation. There is a plan to, or several, to either break California up into different states, or if you look up Cascadia, or if you look up Jefferson as a state. You can see that there are, are propositions, there are thoughts, um, some movements that uh, are to make a more representative area of California so it's not dominated by the several large cities and then everyone else spread out throughout the deserts and mountains and valleys of California. Oh, bubonic, the, the dwarven Urgosh. Yeah, the axe spear. Or, or was, that, was that orcish? Was the Urgosh dwarven or orc? Because in 3rd edition, there were racial weapons. You know, think like Klingons and Batleths. Um, you had Urgoshes and, and some other weapons that were sort of race-specific. Uh, there are three plans. The most viable one is to make, uh, from San Diego to San Francisco, the great urban sprawl a single state, and the rest be its own. Yeah, an axe spear sounds like a poleaxe. Um, white fire, yeah, so when you think of Washington, you think of how Seattle and Olympia are... Not Spokane or even of the smaller rural cities in the mountain towns. 
and you know, and it's, it's similar like with Oregon. Well, who who thinks of anything beyond uh, Portland? And you have the you have a big city that's located in an otherwise rural or agricultural area, and the big city tends to set the perception of the culture of the state when it creates kind of a a politically competitive um, city and everyone else. Oh, uh, Spokane? You gonna tell me that that ain't Spokane? Y'all crazy. That's the singular y'all, too. That's not the plural one. The Urgosh was a dwarven weapon. It was a spear, hammer, and axe all combined. Like a platypus, power of a snake, beaver, and duck. <laughs> so, uh, what was... There was an orcish racial weapon, I think, in third. Right? If you're a half-orc, you got actually... You got training in it. If I recall. No one over here calls it Spokane, mate. Not making fun, just... Cr no, no, that's fine. <laughs> I I feel weird because I say soda. And not a lot of people in Ohio say soda. They call it pop. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And Plunderloot said he will. He does miss the Dwarven Urgosh. It was such a fun weapon. And you know, something. So you could always make something like that in Fifth Edition. There's nothing stopping you. You just come up with what would be a reason that uh, you know what, what would it fall under? Do you want to base it on another type of weapon? Do you want to make it special? Do you want to give everyone a racial weapon? Um, you know, in that case, I guess uh, we can give High Elves uh, spiked chains because that is uh, that is a racial weapon for High Elves. Think about New York, there's a state and a city. Yeah, that's true. And first of all, it's a state, not a city. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was it just a double axe, Mr. Stormwind? That that could very well be. Um Dude, pronounce uh Snoqualmie. Snoqualmie? Is it is that a trick like us uh, uh Schenectady in New York? Which by the way, Bubonic. I pronounced uh, Schenectady. Hey, I got it right. I get experience points. Well, look, Whitefire, I uh, I do my best. Oh. Is uh, have you encountered people who uh, who pronounce the state as uh, Massachusetts? Massachusetts? Like, Massachusetts? My dad lived in New York for a while, so he says soda. I picked it up from him. Oh, no. The, I like soda. Soda is elegant. Soda carries potential. It's so broad. Pop is just this, you know, it's, it's a single syllable word. It just... That's it. You're, it's onomatopoeia. It's not a word. But soda. Mmm, soda. <laughs> Sody pop. <laughs> Del Corin gets first blood on Spicy Larry. <laughs> the non-committal one. The non-committal one. <laughs> um... So on on my first reading, it looks like uh, Puyallup, in, unless it's more of a poi, like a, a poi, uh, Poyallup. So it's like uh, Puyallup or Poyallup. Either way, it kind of sounds like I've been chewing ice for a while, and I'm trying to say like purple. Spicy Larry goes into a dungeon, and can he avoid the alarm? 13, Spicy Larry dodges the alarm, and uh, you get 350 EXP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, so King, it's... I am active in my local newspaper's comment section. And uh, as such, uh, you encounter diversity of opinion. Um, I'll put it tactfully. And when 
This is why not being partisan can is a blessing and a curse. Because you can say something like, oh, you don't want the Electoral College, so you just want the, the five largest cities in the United States to determine the president. Or, oh, you don't you want to do away with a Senate and just have a House of Representatives. And suddenly, you know, I, I have been labeled, um, you know, like uh, I've been labeled a, a right wing nut. I've been labeled as a, a left wing loony. I've been labeled as, uh, I don't know, some insult for a libertarian. I, I just even being called a libertarian, I guess, is an insult. Uh, you, when, when you try and actually put context and reason to political thought, uh, suddenly, no matter what your affiliation is, you are villainized. <laughs> Bubonic, who's ahead of, who is ahead of Bubonic? That is the mystery. Also, oh yeah, there was the gnome hooked hammer. I forgot about that. Elf blades, okay, and a halfling names, a nunchaku, and uh, uh, sanghams. Pull up. I th I think that's what I'm told. If I if I order like if I go down to like if I go down to Carl's Jr., which by the way it's Hardy's up here in Ohio. But if I go to a, like a Carl's Jr. in Texas, I think that's what they tell me to do after I order at the drive-through. Uh, White, are you sure about that? Plunderloot says, uh, oh, a lion jumps out in the plains, 10 and 8. Well, you got it. Plunderloot defeats the lion. <laughs> Yay, I win. Uh, being off center is also fun. Uh, some insult for a libertarian. A Oh. <laughs> I'm such a libertine. I'm libertarian, but I see it as a badge of honor. I understand why. Uh, I understand why, plunder loot. I understand why. Sketch Ben is going into the plains. Uh, you need... Oh, a goblin jumps out. Will, you, will Sketch Ben defeat the goblin? 13 and 13. So even at uh, dis slash advantage, <laughs> Sketch Ben uh, whacks the goblin and gets 75 EXP. Yeah, and those double 13s. <laughs> Look at that, it must be your, it's like all your name days come at once, Sketch Ben. You've been getting some, uh, you've been getting some uh, medieval weaponry ASMR. You got double 13s on a, uh, on a roll. You're having a great night. Hey, Bubonic is up there now. I will say I served in the army, and to me it's my civic duty to vote, and this last go-around... Uh, without getting political, I agree. And uh, I chose to vote for someone rather than against, and... Well, let's just say that we didn't get the 5% that I was hoping. Yes, uh, congrats, Bubonic1. So, uh, we have Spicy Larry is the stream boss, though the one uh, who's working the treasury, uh, Bubonic one here, is perhaps the shadow prime minister of the channel. <laughs> okay, well... I need to get up and take another break. I'll, I'll grab a stretch. Uh, after checking, uh, yes, that is correct, uh, Plunder Loot. Um, after uh, after checking the laws and such, I uh, I am in legal ownership of a uh, of a knife that I can uh, I can show you all. So I will uh, I will uh, bring it down and show it off and. We'll get into our, our third section and talk about, you know, whatever's clever. We have it made in the shade with a glass of lemonade. Chillin' like a villain on penicillin sitting next to Bob Dylan. You know, a lot of college people voted for Gary, you know, from what I knew, he wanted to defund. Well, I was, while I'm not, you know, I, I won't say things for or against in particular, uh, I do want to make sure we're not going to get too political in the channel since that's not the aim. Um, <laughs> hey, and white fire with a pun, right? We're talking about blades and all this other stuff. Um, I agree, and you know what? Sometime, I'm not going to censor this kind of content, 
um, you know, uh, we're, it is civil, though that's, uh, that's just not the context right now. However, if uh, there's a particular night that we wanted to get together, and despite any of our political leanings, not that anyone has to declare it or tolerate it, we can come together and in a context of let's build a nation in D and D, right? Let's let's focus on what policies would we have based on the region and whatnot. And we can do thinking exercises. We can get into some political weeds if we're keeping, um, you know, we we kind of have a we we have a nun at the at the 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 Catholic school dance, making sure that we're you know standing four inches apart from each other. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Whitefire, I'm, I'm fine. I understand what you're getting. I think you'll, you'll find a lot of people uh, are open-minded and or sympathetic to the things that you're saying. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I agree. I completely agree, Mr. Plunderloot. Um, and you know what? I think that there are enough of us in here that we can actually have discussions, but I don't want to stray too far from the core concept of the channel of, um, of fantasy role-playing and... Uh, you know, D&D &D and such. So we can have those just... Uh... Oh, and that's a great story in and of itself because, you know, there's a lot of families that unfortunately have, uh, you know, divisions in, in them uh, based along partisan lines, and it's that should never... Of all the things to come between family members, that just... I, I wish that didn't happen, you know? In fact, we even made... Uh, you know, in some ways, we even can generate characters that might be able to relate to that in some way. It's great if you want to express yourself as a character, if you've been through something like that. And so, you know, we could even break it down to, well, I support the king and I don't support the king. Or if we go back even further, we were discussing, uh, actually, it was Derek. It was Macabre Derek um, when he kind of said, oh, someone got the noble background and is good, you know, and it was sort of like a ha ha, like nobles and good. You know, there's that whole joke about, and that's what we call the aristocrats, which keeping this a PG-13 channel, I will just say that there's a joke called the aristocrats. You can look it up yourself if you want to, <laughs> but and unless we really tame them down, I don't want any aristocrats jokes in here. Um, you know, and then we, we went into, well, you know, if you have this, that's a perception, right? If, if you're the king and you, and you want to be a good person, you want to be uh, a, a good king, well, your your peasantry or whatever you want to call them may not view you as good because you're making the hard decisions. You're making informed decisions. You're consulting with people that can speak two, three languages, let alone barely you know chew up and spit out the home language and are illiterate to letters. And so you may very well be a good king making long-term decisions for your countryside, but your peasantry in your kingdom will, uh, will see you as a villain and plotting and all that. Now, could you be a villain too? Yeah, you could be smart and a villain and go that way. Um, so really, it's, uh, perception could matter in that case if we're talking about a public fig a figure and not just an individual, such as, for instance, look, Roscoe Tealeaf. He is neutral evil, but here he is. He's in a band of uh, with three other bards and a yet-to-be-generated fifth member of the band. And... But this is just indicating he's really selfish. It's not that he gets up and he just, you know, burns down orphanages and kicks kittens in the street. He's just very self-centered. And he wants to serve himself first. And he says the things he wants to say. In fact, that is even reflected down in his personality. So... Yes, Derek. Everyone has a joke called the aristocrats. The hard part's making it your own. <laughs> well, and you have groups on both sides saying, yeah, yeah, that's... Gotta get out of the group think, you know? Well, I can understand that, uh, although it's for a matter... Uh, for me, it's a matter of faith and my lack... Oh, gotcha. Apparently there's a documentary about these jokes. And, and there was a whole stand-up special. Like, there was a, well, like a parade of 20 comedians, like top-end comedians, and they each told their favorite version of the Aristocrats. It was its own, like, hour-long special or something like that. All right, well, by the way, we have, we have like, 30 people in chat. Welcome, everyone. I know that uh, <laughs> our, our conversation has been hither and thither as we've been talking, but uh, you know what? If you're here lurking, if you've been here since we were going over the demonstrations of the, the weapons and what they look like compared to the sketches in our player's handbook, 
right? We had, we had our equipment section opened up down here and we we're going over. All right. So here's sketches of, uh, here's sketches of things. See, look, Oh, look at that. Boom. But of course, you know, what, what are they going to call that? Um, you know, sketches versus reality. We're comparing, uh, weapons of even past editions, uh, to what is available in fifth. We have done, uh, we've done a lot here. And uh, it's, it's been a great time, and I super appreciate you all coming along on this ride. I'm not saying that because I'm shutting down the channel for the evening. I am saying that, though, because i got to get up and um, I'm going to stretch. might use the restroom, drink some water. And um... Venom Rage, hello, welcome, and thank you for coming in. And Kalania, cheers to you as well. <laughs> thank you for the discretion, Derek. No, 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 I, I, I get what you're saying, Plunder. You're fine. Whitefire says, yay, P3 incoming. P3. Keska say. Or are you talking about the, the paints? The, the Privateer Press paints, the P3 paint line? Do you have incoming Privateer Press paints, Whitefire? Oh, part three. Yeah. All right. Part three is coming up and I'll give you all some bonus experience points. Um, yeah. <laughs> White fire read the schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, uh, someone actually was able to decipher what I have going on, uh, down in my, <laughs> in my, uh, my Twitch feed. Oh gosh. All right. So here, here's our short rest. Uh, enjoy this, uh, the, the roasted suckling pig. Enjoy the fresh fruits. Uh, enjoy the, uh, the doggo, the sleeping doggo we have going on down there. Um, there's trees, there's squoils, we'll bless them all. <laughs>